Hi everyone, sorry we're a little bit late today. I'm Lana here at the County Uinta County Heritage Museum doing Courageous Woman today. So today, um, let me get this turned around if I can remember how to do it. Oh, whoops, that's not right. There we go. All right, so here's this beautiful woman. Her name is Mary Elvira Rogers Orser. So Mary was born in Provo, Utah, May 17, 1863. She was born to David White Rogers and Ellen Bennett Rogers. Um, the reason why I'm doing Mary Elvira today is um, she was a teacher. And we think about the hardships the teachers are having today and kind of a reminder that teachers have always had difficult jobs um, from the very beginning. Um, let me find my paper here. So she graduated high school and went to um, Brigham Young Academy where she um, done the two year thing to become a teacher. She then started teaching in Mountain View schools in Provo, Utah, but really her teaching career started in Lost River, Idaho. Um, that was a small farming community in 1886. She was um, 28 years old at the time, um, up in there, 26, 28. Um, she remembers the first school room was a one room cabin with a dirt roof and floor, a small pot bellied wood burning stove in the corner. The desks were slabs of wood and seats were fashioned like milk stools and she taught all grades in that one school. Her mother died that winter, it was a severe winter, and she brought her mother back to Provo, Utah to bury her, and she remained in Provo the rest of the season teaching at the Old Page School. She returned to Idaho the next year and taught at the Houston um, town, which is a ghost town now, and she was excited because it the school was a little bit better and more comfortable than the last one, even though it was just a small log cabin, 16 by 20. The problem was is the young men, um, the boys would only go to school in the wintertime because as soon as spring come or harvest, they didn't go to school. And that was one of the things that um, bothered her is that they would have a short amount of education in the school. That winter, the snow was so deep, and one of the young men had fell in the snow. This is her story, and she felt bad about it. Um, when he arrived at school, his hand was frozen tightly to his lunch bucket pail. Um, she sent one of the boys to the nearest farmhouses for some kerosene that she soaked the tiny hand in, and the frost left without ill effects. It was up to the students to bring their own lunch and their own transportation to the school. That winter, um, they had a visit of a professional gambler in town, and he brought with him his young bro a younger brother, um, who was almost a grown man, and he could neither read nor write, and would Miss Rogers take him to teach him to read and write. Um, they, she worked with the young man, and when spring rolled around, he could do pos he could possibly um, read a little bit and could write enough to get by. And they paid her twenty dollars for her services. Others found out, and so she done education. Um, she taught the three arts by correspondence. So what an, uh, a brilliant idea is to teach. Um, rural communities by correspondence. In, Mar in 1891, when she's 29 years old, she married Franklin M. Orser, um, Moses, Franklin Moses, and that's when they moved to Jensen, Utah. He had a farm here in Jensen, and he raised cattle, and she found it very lonely, so she returned to teaching school here in Uinta County. Um, at this time, um, she had their firstborn son. He was born, um, his name was Everett. He was born in Idaho, and he died at three months old. She had took him to school with her and put him 
to sleep in another room so she could teach the school. And when she went in, she found him passed away. A couple of years later, she had another son, um, William Lynn. That was her second son in 1893. Um, she was 30 years old at the time. And then when she was 32 in 1895, she had her third son, Edwin D. And then t about 10 years later after that, when she was 43, she had her daughter, Ellen Alta Orser, and she married a Crockett. Um, let me put this picture up. Here's a family picture of them. Let me see if I can pan out a little bit. So the girl here in the middle is not a family member. Um, we can't really find out much information other than her name is Nancy Ann Mantle. And why she's in a family photo, we have no idea. But here's her baby girl and her two boys um, surviving. So we're not sure if maybe she was a, like a caretaker nanny for the kids or the baby. We're not sure her story. I tried to look some up on her and I'll maybe um, find some more about that. When she was in the basin, she taught school. She believed in education fiercely. Um, she ran to become the superintendent of Uinta County Schools, and she won that in 1903. That year, the Utah State Legislator um, passed the law. It's called the Free School Book Law, was passed. And this was one of her hardest things as a superintendent to do because at that time, the county had to afford to buy the school books and supplies needed for the schools. So being at that time, Uinta County was a sparsely populated county. They paid 10 times more taxes for the schools at that time than the other counties that had more population. Um, it was a difficult burden to bear and one of Mary's most challenging issues as superintendent. Um, before that law passed, you as a family had to buy your supplies and books for your student. Um, that was a problem in Uinta County because um, Uinta County at that time um, was not, people were not, they were very poor. So um, that was to help out, but it still cost the families of Uinta County a lot of money um, at that time. I forgot to put this picture up. This is a picture of her and her husband. This is in her, when they got married. What a beautiful dress she had. Kind of fun. That's a picture of, of um, Franklin there. Um, Franklin just kept farming. So when she, her um, tenure as superintendent of the county, Uinta County was up, that's when they opened up the reservation um, for homesteading. And they purchased a place in Duchesne County, just right across the border um, in Roosevelt. Um, she continued to teach school in the Roosevelt area and the Ballard area. Um, she taught school for 35 years um, in the altogether in her life, but um, she was a favorite teacher. Even she served as principal of the Ballard School. She taught at the Ballard School. She taught, she made a note here um, how the Native American students had beautiful penmanship, loved art and music. The only trouble was they were not consistent into coming to school, and that made her sad. Um, her house was across um, from Union High School, and even in her 90s, she fought for a sidewalk um, on the highway in front of the school so the students didn't have to walk. They had a safe place to walk. She passed away... Um, in um, 1956, February 27th. She was 92 years old at that time. She belonged to many clubs. She belonged to the Bridge Club, Alteris Club. The, she was the daughter of the Utah Pioneers. 
um, PTA, uh, Utah County Teachers Association, where she held many um, um, positions in the Unit County Teachers Association. Um, she belonged to the Roosevelt Culture Club. Um, she liked to act. She would go to the library and do storytelling. Um, she would participate in some plays um, in the community. She was um, in the on the Church's Relief Society and Mutual Improvement Association Count, Council for 20 years for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, it doesn't say much about her boys. She took four years off in the middle of teaching and took her boys to Provo for secondary education. Um, that was the only four years since she started teaching that she didn't teach until she retired. Um, she, at Christmas time, they say her home would be full of plants and gifts and cards of past students and um, how much she was loved. I think teachers are underrated, and especially in this day and age, but to think about... Here's a picture um, of Mrs. Orser from her obituary. Um, beautiful lady. I'm sure she's still missed by um, some. Um, I hope that we um, take time to thank our teachers and the schools for working as hard as they do. Also, I need to thank um, the Vernal Express where I got my information, um, the Outlaw Trail Journal that the History Center puts out, um, some DUP, Daughters of Utah Pioneer Publications, the newspapers, um, a lot of fun researching her. I can't imagine teaching school that many years and um, raising a family at the same time and being a superintendent and in charge. Um, we hope that if you have any courageous women's stories you would like to share, give us a call and we will see you next week.